Thank you very much. It's going to be really hard actually to speak after Caleb. It was such a powerful speech that I heard. Um, today I'm going to talk about cybersecurity in critical infrastructure. Um, and I'm going to take you to a little bit of a journey on why critical infrastructure is actually important. Um, cyberspace surrounds the modern and interconnected world today. So we are living in that interconnected world. And not only the individuals or the companies, but also states are vulnerable to cyber attacks. Our daily lives, for instance, are connected to devices that are linked to open portals and to the internet. Uh, your Bluetooth toothbrush, for instance, or your children's uh, or your child's teddy bear, as well as your coffee machine that could brew that amazing coffee before you even wake up, can actually be hacked. The key to be cyber savvy is then to be aware of that vulnerabilities that surround you, and also um, to, to realize that no individual organization or a state is actually secure today or in the future from cyber attacks. A colleague of mine once said something really interesting and important. She said that the moment that you think that you are secure is actually the moment that you are more vulnerable. And that is interesting because you need to be always skeptical and it can take months to several years for you to actually realize that you were breached or your systems were breached, I mean. But I wish this was, on, this was the only problem that we've seen today. Uh, and that's not the same. Not all cyber attacks are the same. While all attacks are serious, some attacks are actually severe than others. Attacks to stealing information that we've been talking about today, about like the personnel information or maybe the facility layout of a nuclear power plant, uh, can cause some sort of danger, but it, not, it would not lead to uh, huge problems for the state. It could be still, um, in a way, um, secured uh, if it is taken in a serious manner. But attacks to industrial control systems, such as the SCADA systems, um, can lead to medium or high level consequences. An industrial control system, what is an industrial control system? Industrial control system is a system that transmits real-time data and messages uh, from sensors to central locations. Sometimes it goes through the uh, space and uses the satellites as well. And if they are compromised, the impact may range from severe economic consequences, social consequences, reputational consequences, to loss of life as well. Now, there are certain gaps that, the, the certain myths that actually exist in, when you think about the critical infrastructure security from the cyber field. One is that the companies think that, oh, we are secure, there's nothing going to happen to, to, to me, uh, I have been taking in control of everything, and our control systems and, and the critical assets are actually air-gapped. The air gap is kind of like this terminology that's been used, basically, saying that your systems are isolated from the internet, they are not uh, connected to the cloud, so uh, at least the critical assets, so you think that you're secure. There are certain ways to breach air gap. Insider threat, for instance, is one of the ways, which is kind of like the physical component coming up with the uh, cyber component. The other ways are, are also um, Pen testers, the penetration testers, actually found out, for instance, that sometimes the, uh, the vending machines in your company that can be connected to your IoT system that you were not aware of. This is like the hidden kind of uh, backdoor that, that you've never noticed. Um, or um, I know, for instance, that in Israel, there is research in nuclear power plants where uh, the control system can be uh, the air gap control system can be hijacked through, uh, through phones that are not actually inside the uh, control system, but in the periphery of the, of the nuclear power plant. So the technology is, is going ahead, but we are still lacking the, the basic information. The other myth that we have is that the, okay, you know, you're talking about critical infrastructure, but 
it has never happened. Like the critical infrastructure has never been breached or attacked. Well, that is not true, actually. It has happened. Stuxnet is a very good example of that. How many of you know Stuxnet, heard, heard of Stuxnet? Okay, that's a, that's a very good number. Because Stuxnet happened in a nuclear power plant, right? The Iranian nuclear power plant. And what happened over there was like, it was a computer war, a virus that was through an insider threat uh, put to the computer system of the centrifuges of Iran, uh, where the centrifuges normally needed to do nuclear material, create nuclear material, they, they were breached and they didn't function, so it was crippled, basically. It was developed by Israel and United States. It's not the first person I'm saying this. The New York Times actually revealed that information. Um, and that was the biggest, it was kind of this, main time that we saw, wow, actually, this can happen. And after that time frame, we have seen other attacks as well. So I believe that the biggest challenge today that we see is the protection of the critical national infrastructure from cyber intrusion and cyber, in, uh, cyber interferences. Caleb mentioned that 80% of the attacks that happen actually happened uh, by the bad guys and the hackers and to the kind of the economic structure, which is true. But then and that 10 to 15 percent or the 20 percent remaining, if a successful attack happens, the consequences of that attack goes beyond the individuals, goes beyond the companies. It also affects the state, the, the nationhood of that state. And that is particularly concerning to me. Cyber vulnerabilities are all about connectivity. You are connected in a way, and your companies are connected, and data integrity. The security of data and security of channels that transmits and receives that data are critical for the protection of the uh, national infrastructure. So what is that critical national infrastructure that we talk about? In UK, for instance, the CNIs, the critical national infrastructures, are uh, defined as the composition of facilities, systems, sites, uh, processes, people, network, that is necessary for a country to function. Now, these facilities, systems, and sites um, are also being affected and, and using, basically, the essential services that the individuals rely on to, such as water, or energy, or transportation, communication, or the banking system, right? Health system, for instance, we now know in the UK that is vulnerable to cyber attacks. So protecting this critical infrastructure, and an example of these, for instance, the chemical sector or the nuclear power plant sector, uh, the civil nuclear sector, emergency services, energy, finance, government offices, um, space and transform, uh, transportation is critical for a nation to survive in today's world and in future's world. Um, there are cases that I said that happened previously, and I gave Stuxnet as an example. But that is not only that does not only happen in the in the Middle East or other countries. It also happens to us in in the developed world as well. The UK Energy Grid, for instance, the GCHQ, has warned only a few months ago, in I think July 2017, that government-backed hackers were targeting the UK energy grid. And it was the same time when the Irish energy company also said that the Russian military hackers were attacking uh, through, uh, through emails. Um, a few months before then, at that time, the U United States actually made a declaration saying that hackers breached a, a kind of dozens of nuclear power plants in the United States. So things are happening. But why would why would a hacker, government back hacker, I would say, be interested in actually doing such attacks to the critical infrastructure? The, okay, the main aim, I, I believe, is to find vulnerabilities in the energy grid, if it is the energy sector. But it all boils down to how you use cyber, cyber means to affect the foreign policy and the politics of today, and to shift, in a way, the balance of power that exists in the world. Now, you may all remember the case 
when Gazprom actually, the Russian energy company, cut off the gas supply from Ukraine back, I think, in 2005. And also Gazprom back at the time threatened Europe, saying that I'll, I'll continue doing this and cut Euro, uh, Europe's energy as well. This was not a moment about cybersecurity back then, or, or we, we, we didn't see that in that way. But energy sector has always been financial to the running of the countries for foreign policy, and it has been used as a weapon, in a way, for the countries to change the political discourse. In Ukraine, back at, at, at the time, there was going to be an um, election, for instance. And also, for me, the energy sector is particularly critical because it is the point, energy is the point where state vulnerabilities could actually turn into dependencies, because we rely on energy in, in the state sense. Um, and this is for, uh, true for the whole world. For instance, Iran was after the Saudi Aramco attacks for the last two times uh, in the last decade and caused immense, uh, immense uh, consequences for the companies. Of course, this was not a critical infrastructure attack, but it shows Iran's willingness uh, to go ahead and to do uh, the, the cyber challenges. There are different actors in the cyber field um, that has mentioned previously by other uh, speakers, but in the critical infrastructure, we don't see like terrorist organizations, for instance, yet being, uh, being on the field and um, working, working to actually infiltrate to the critical infrastructures of the states. What we see basically is United States, Russia, North Korea, China to be, to be the major players in, in, in this game. United King, uh, Kingdom is very good in cyber defense and actually I heard that uh, from an official that they are also doing cyber offense against ISIS oper operations as well. Uh, France and Germany are also really good in cyber defense in the critical infrastructure field as well. Now, saying all these things, please remember that the, the, the thing I first said at the very beginning, the time that you think that you are uh, secure is the time that you're more vulnerable. That brings me to the challenges that we today face. Organizations, industries, and critical national infrastructure enterprises mainly have not yet, yet grasped the scope of the cyber risks. Partially, the reason is the threats are not yet identified in a manner, manner and the consequences are not yet seen. They are, the organizations are not transparent to share information, uh, even with the regulators, so there is that challenge that we see. And there's another challenge that comes from the supply chain. Organizations that rely mainly on the systems of other organizations uh, need to examine their level of hidden vulnerabilities uh, in their organizations. But that, that is a hard part too, and there's not regulate, no regulation so far about the supply chain too. So what are the recommendations I would give? First of all, responsibility in the critical national infrastructure, security of the critical national infrastructure lies on all stakeholders. It is not only the governments. Whereas governments can assist the organizations to assist in a certain degree and can kind of incentivize things, the CNIs have the responsibility to instill awareness into their personnel sheets. Uh, this requires board level commitment and in organizational culture and shaping the or new organizational culture. Um, and I have been talking to the nuclear industry, for instance, and there is not much awareness that, ha that occurs in the nuclear industry yet. The CFOs and CEO CEOs uh, need to have the, this intensive uh, inten incentives for their personnel to recognize the uh, cyber threats. The second recommendation goes to the insurers. Uh, and we have been talking to the insurers as well, and I see that there is this um, increased attention from the insurers to get into the discussion about uh, cybersecurity in the critical national infrastructure, why insurance can help. That is the main, that, that, that is the main question. Insurance provides more than uh, providing compliance to the organizations. It can actually create incentives to the organizations to outperform themselves and to achieve industry-wide guidelines. 
And of course, the insurers can create risk models for the uh, organizations and metrics. And at the end, though, it all boils down to whether the uh, insurers can bear that risk and how much risk actually they are willing to take. The third recommendation, and I'm finishing off now, is that um, the, all of these organizations need to have a forensic team and a mitigation strategy and a recovery strategy. And they should also do penetration testing to understand that what are the vulnerabilities in certain components of the critical national infrastructure. And also they should do red team simulations uh, for recognizing certain type of threats and to be on top of the game. And lastly, personal training and development of staff is extremely important. HR, for instance, has a crucial responsibility with their vetting structures to prevent insider threat problem. Um, the CNI enterprises should always remember one thing. The, the moment that you think that you're secure is the moment that you are most vulnerable. Thank you.